hereby bring the meeting of the Wairika City Council to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. And if you have your cell phone with you, please turn it off. I'll turn mine off too. <laughs> or at least turn the volume off. Okay. Uh, Cell phones. This is the time for public comments. Council may ask questions but may take no action during the public comment section of the meeting except to direct staff to prepare a report or place an item on a future agenda. If you are here to make comments on a specific agenda item, you may speak at that time. If not, this is the time. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Speakers, please speak from the podium right over here. State your name and mailing address so that city staff can respond to you in regards to your comments or provide you with information if appropriate. You are not required to state your name and address if you do not desire to do so. Does anyone have a public comment that is not something not on the agenda? No? One more time. Anybody have a public comment? Okay. Thank you. We'll go straight into our presentation. Robin Richards is here, and she's going to make a presentation and update on the status of the proposed recreation and parks district development process. Welcome, Robin. Well, thank you. Uh, good to be here again. It seems like I've been here several times over the last year. And uh, first off, thank you for having me. I really appreciate uh, the ability to talk about our latest and greatest project that the community is working on. Um, what I'd like to do is give you a quick update of where we are with this pool, parks, and rec things. You obviously know a lot of it. Some of the people in the audience might not know as much about it. Then I want to talk about the timeline that we have developed for where we need to be when, and it's pretty darn tight, so that's one reason to come here. And then talk about the resolution that we're requesting uh, and the contents of that, okay? So, um, all of you know why we had a city pool. Uh, well, has a city pool. It's just not functional. Okay, can you hold on just sure. a second? Somebody in the audience, I think it's Catherine Gilbert, is passing out information that we do not oh, have. Oh, yeah, she's going to get it right up to you. Okay. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> yeah, we need to have it in advance so we can read it. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Well, this is the just like this is part of this is actually my presentation. You Thank have you. to have it up front. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. But I'll be walking you through all of that. Okay. Stuff. Thank Perfect. you. Okay, so back to Reedy Pool. So it closed in 2017, and uh, we've been working to try to figure out a way to replace the pool. And obviously, you all know because you submitted a grant to the California Parks and Recreation. Uh, and we still program. haven't heard Parks, back. And we haven't heard back, but we're still keeping our fingers crossed. I did see something on their website that they got $2.3 billion worth of requests for the $245 million that they could give away. So it's about, I think you said 10% or 1 to 10. Yeah. So it sounds like it's still uh, good. I, I just think ours is terrific, so we'll of course, yeah. able to get it. <laughs> anyway, so back to when we put this stuff together, we had about 300 uh, or so citizens attend 11 public meetings. Uh, like you said, the grant was uh, submitted. It's for a new larger pool, a retractable cover, a splash pad, a new building, a revised entrance from the parking lot, pathways and landscaping, and improved little league field. So it's got a comprehensive uh, activities for bringing pools to the park. So simultaneously to that effort, uh, when we started it, it was around, actually it was around this time last year, around February, March, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, because we had the public meetings in April. Uh, we were also looking at one of the key concerns, which was maintenance and operation. And I think I talked to you guys about it, because we put that in thinking, okay, so now how can we maintain and operate it? Yeah. Well, therein lies what we're talking about tonight, is kind of how we are envisioning we might be able to do that. That group, we had a committee that met a couple of times and then many of us met and uh, after the grant was done, we started to meet a couple of times and I'll go through the timeline uh, in a bit about what we've done. Um, we really looked and we thought that uh, creating a recreation and parks district might be the best option for us. It seemed like not only would it uh, work on the pool maintenance and operation issue, but it was also be a kind of an exciting thing for Wairika to have, you know, a recreation uh, department, because we haven't had one for a really long time. So, um, what I'd like to do now, as you all have this hand, I'm going to kind of walk through the timeline of where we are to just sort of let you know where we were. So, 
If you look at the very first thing, April to September, we've been uh, working on uh, discussing what we would like to do, and we've had uh, several meetings. Uh, specifically, we had a group of people meet on October 29th, kind of the initial group of kind of a citizens committee to form this Wairika Parks and Recreation District. Um, and they decided that we needed more background information and some more uh, stuff, so we did that in, in November. We had a budget committee meeting, and we looked first to kind of the area to be served and um, sort of just talked about it generally. Then we had another meeting December 4th, uh, which the group also uh, made some further recommendations on what we might want to do. And they also suggested that we have some open community meetings, which we conducted uh, January 28th and 29th. Uh, and they came up with some more ideas, primarily about, they were kind of really excited about the, uh, not just the pool, but the whole idea of recreational programming within um, Wairika. So that was cool. Um, then uh, on February 13th, we had another group meeting uh, oh, that was just last week, huh? Because it's just 20 okay. <laughs> Well, we're getting up to where we are now. Okay, and that group just made some recommendations, which I'll go over in just a bit, about the structure of, of the uh, organization. So here's where we are now, February 20th, yay. Uh, then, if this, is, um, this is where it gets tight, okay? So March 5th is what we are proposing, if you all agree to have you take a look at the resolution. Um, I talked to LAFCO, and just so you know, I did talk to the LAFCO consultant uh, as well in putting together that resolution, and he was telling me about some of the contents that should be in there. So um, it, March 12th would be if they want to review it in April, and then April 14th they have a LAFCO meeting, uh, and then if LAFCO says yes, then we would develop a ballot measure, language, and review. It would go sometime around May. I just put a random date because I don't know if that's actually the date, but in May to the Board of Supervisors so they can put that on the ballot. The, the um, key date here is July 13th. That is the deadline for us to have something on the ballot. That's why we're kind of crunched in terms of timing. And the unknowns are obvious, really the big unknown is, is the LAFCO review. And if they find that it's without problems, uh, then we could go forward with that, but I, I just don't know that uh, as, as of yet. Then, uh, if you continue on, um, let's say everything works well, or be great. Uh, then August and September, we would run campaigns in October. The ballots are mailed October 3rd, and November 3rd would be the general election, in which case they, they act on uh, both the district and a parcel tax, which would support the district. If everything, and we get two-thirds of the vote, in November, then it would go on the 2021 tax bill, uh, and the items we collect in 2021, so that actually the district wouldn't even be around until about this time two years from now, 2022. So if you miss this election, it really does put you back even more years. Right. So that's kind of why we're in a little bit of a doing it quickly. Okay, so that's kind of the timeline. Um, what goes into the resolution, and I did send a draft uh, to Steve, and I think they're reviewing it. Is that some right, Steve? Yes. Yeah. Um, part of it's the boundaries. And you have a picture of the boundaries, but I don't know I'll this one this way. So uh, what we did, I love these like little visual things. Mm -hmm. They're fun. Okay, nice. so we looked at the, at the city of Wairika, and that's in the purple right there. And obviously that's I-5 running through it. And what's in the white is kind of a modification of the Wairika Elementary School District. Wairika Elementary School District includes all this, except this is Delphi, so that's not in there. But they also have a, a big chunk up there. So we kind of looked at that, and we thought, if we were just using the elementary school district, this seemed like kind of too far away. Um, and Delphi seemed close, and they all, always, I mean, they kind of come into to Wairika. So, the group thought, well, that seems like a, um, an, a good idea. They actually are based on voting precincts, so it's really, uh, the purple are all the Wairika 1 through 6, the voting precincts, and then the outside white ones are the, um, the precincts that are just touching Wairika. So we kind of looked at that. We also looked at zip code, uh, and in looking at zip code, 
work in poly. It got kind of messy and kind of confusing because it was very hard. Sometimes the zip codes don't really match really well. Like there's a zip code for why we here and not there. I mean, it just, it was a little odd. This seemed like a really good structural way. Plus we already had a way to define it in terms of the boundaries because they're based on existing precincts. So the voting part of it uh, would be um, an easier way to, to look at it. So, sound okay? That's kind of the rationale for doing that. I don't know if there's other comments on the rationale. Does that seem right? Okay, so that's kind of the boundary we have. And you have a copy in your handout so you can kind of take a look at it. The next thing we needed to do besides figuring out the boundaries is how are we going to govern this thing and how are we going to uh, do it. So we looked at Mount Shasta um, Recreation and Park District. And they have a five member board that's appointed by the city council and the board of supervisors. Um, you can either do an appointed board or you can do an elected board. And one of the, the rationale for doing an appointed board is you don't have to pay for elections and go in. It gets pretty spendy and time consuming and you have them every two years and you don't do special. I mean, it's just, it makes it a little harder. And so we thought it was also in line with what Mount Chasta Recreation District is doing as well. And they do a similar thing. They have their city council appoints some, and I think there's one uh, or so that, that the board of supervisors. So that was the governance structure that we were recommending uh, for that. So that's included in, in the resolution. The other pieces are um, we needed to determine um, a description and the level of services. So that is is part of this, and really the main services, I want to get to the section here, is um, to really en enrich the quality of life. I mean, that's kind of the overarching reason for doing it. Uh, work with the city of Wairika on proactive maintenance and operations for the facilities, but in particular, ringing pool and park. Certainly that's our focus. Uh, to build community awareness and excitement about recreational programming. Um, and then to coordinate with other organizations and agencies. One of the things that in kind of all of our talks from a lot of people is, is we have a lot of nonprofits that are out there. We have soccer, we have Little League, we have Bay Ruth, we have um, the community gardens, we have, I probably forget, well there's a lot. Anyway, there's a lot of like nonprofits that, that work. And this would be, um, a way to kind of coordinate and help parents, because they'd still be doing what they do, but they're all parent volunteers that are doing mm -hmm. this. And so they don't have like a place that, that specializes in recreation that they can go to to, to ask questions. So that's one of the, the things that we thought of as well. Um, in terms of what we would be doing, um, a focus in terms of the budget uh, is Reggie Pool and Park. And we would be maintaining the pool and uh, assuming all the maintenance and operations. Um, and that will go hand in hand with something that I'll mention in, in just a bit. Uh, we also talked about maybe working with the city on the park scheduling. Because if, if this is a recreational program and they're working with the soccer and the <coughs> little league and all the other, they might do the scheduling for the parks and uh, take that burden off the city staff because they would be the ones that would be knowing what's going on recreationally. And obviously we're gonna be like this after in terms of working with the city. Uh, they would conduct recreational programming. Um, they look for funding opportunities that they might be able, because if they're a district, and they can apply for, for grants just like you all can. And those are kind of the key things that we talked about. Uh, there is kind of a phase thing of when things would begin, but it, it, nothing can begin until two years from now if we're approved. Okay, so that's, kind of the activities that we're, we're taking a look at. Um, along with that, that we discussed, when I met with the LAFCO guy, and I'll just tell you what he said, he goes, well, if your parks are wreck, why don't you just get all the parks and you own them all? And I'm going like, oh my, that's a little bit bigger than I had thought when we were trying to do this. We were really concerned about the pool, the park, and some recreational stuff. So we talked about it, and one of the things that we thought would be good is if the district did have some property. The property that makes the most sense is, sense is rainy park and pool. Because if we're going to be spending um, money to maintain it and have the staffing and all that stuff, 
then that would make sense to have them located at that park and, and they are then responsible for it. Not all the other parks, just really that one, it made kind of sense. So that might be something that, that's kind of what we're proposing to do that for just the one park would be owned by the district. Mount Shasta owns, I think, all the parks except one in Mount Shasta, but they started in 1948, so they've been around forever and probably purchased them actually as a district. But So that kind of made sense uh, to do that transfer, but not the others. Instead, just working on the programming at those parks and, and maybe scheduling and working with the volunteer groups. So that would be a property exchange that would, would go in line with that. Then um, the next one is the important one, is the funding. Uh, so we put together a budget and we've been kind of bouncing numbers around and finally came uh, about to need about $500,000 annually uh, in order to operate it. That would include all of the stuff and running the pool for eight months instead of the three months which we used to run it as part of that grant. And so you need kind of year-round staff, you need year-round operations, and uh, they'd be doing a little bit more just than the pool part of it. So. We evaluated kind of uh, funding sources um, all along the way. I mean, we looked at property uh, uh, sales tax. We can't do that. We couldn't do this. We couldn't do that. So we landed on uh, parcel tax. And uh, the proposal that we're putting in for would be $96, which is um, $8 a month is kind of how we're looking at it, to operate uh, this district. Um, and so that has to obviously go and get a two-thirds vote in November. Uh, but we, we are hoping that we're going to be able to, to give people an idea. When we did go around and knock on doors just for those public meetings, people were really excited about the pool. Uh, now I know they said, well, what if we don't get the grant? If we don't get the grant, we apply again and we look for other sources of funding. So it's not like, a, it's not like we're getting out even if we don't get this one. And as, and as I mentioned before, the grant people said, uh, they'll give us feedback on what we could do better if we don't get it to apply next time. So, um, so that is something that we're planning to do. And we won't be in existence for two years anyway, so uh, that's the other thing. Um, there's a CEQA requirement for LAFCO, but I think we can <coughs> get some exemption or something. I can't remember how the majority is of it, but Cat we didn't Categorical think exemption? Probably something like that, that we so. wouldn't necessarily right. need to do Yeah, that. sounds right. I, I think it'd be a cat X, but I'm not positive. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the guy said to me too. Some yeah. kind of categorical exemption. Um, so, okay, so you have this little handout. I went through the timeline. I went through this, and you have the background. I talked about the process. So, I guess I'm, I'm ready to answer questions. We just kind of give you. a an update, we have been working on it. I, 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 I tell you, I haven't heard yet, except people go, gosh, how are you going to get the election? Well, we, we'll plan a campaign and we'll, we'll give it the old college try to get two-thirds vote. That's all we can say and all we can do. I'm optimistic. I haven't heard a lot of people say no. They actually are excited about having um, a recreational district. And we've been working on YMCA people are here. There are key people that are, are looking at us, particularly because they know how much it cost energy and cost-wise to do a pool. And they're very much in favor of having this kind of an organization help us out with that. So, Good. so do you want to add anything, guys? I'm sorry. I think we have one question from a council member. Sure. Yes. Uh, the ballot proposition, is it all in one, or is there two parts, two separate parts? Okay. One. Just for one, OK. And how much do you estimate out of your $500,000 budget is for the pool? Approximately half of it or more? More. More than half. More. So it's well over, probably over 300,000 or more. Closer to four. Closer to four. And that's kind of what we heard in estimates, Ballpark. having okay. done this pool stuff. It, it's right. three or 400,000. Yeah, isn't that kind of what you guys? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. the white people going, they've done a lot of work on it. Yeah. Is it 10% approximately, Steve? There's some uh, rules of thumb that, that right. indicate that somewhere around 10% of the cost of the pool. Now that's for a full time. Uh, year-round um, pool right. um, and so but part of and some of that includes not just the actual operating expenses that year but to build in money for uh, doing things that come up every five years or ten years or right. or that sort of thing um, it's it's hard to know until you actually run one 
right. exactly how much it costs, and we want to make sure that there's enough of a budget so that it continues to uh, operate smoothly. Um, also, Mass said uh, ask the parcel tax uh, ninety six dollars per parcel to fund the district. What is on um, Mount Shasta's Parks and Recreation? What are they? What are they charging? They, they actually are under property tax. They they were nineteen forty eight, okay. so they get some share of property tax. Oh, okay. So they aren't funded. The they're same not way. funded the same they way. Aren't, okay. And they're after we're after Prop thirteen, and they were obviously way before. Gotcha. So they okay. have that available, and that's uh, along the lines of my question too. So the ninety six dollars per parcel, approximately. How much revenue will that gain you every year? Do you know? It's over half a million. Is it 500,000? Because it depends on the number of households. Well, I, I went on the uh, non-exempt. You have 4,884 non-exempt pieces. Okay. Was it, would that be correct, Robin? Right. That's, that's the general estimate on parcels right. and how pieces will address the sign. Or, yeah. Well, actually, it's not approved. Well, it's not those exempt. are not exempt. Some parcels are for service or service. Right. Uh, like right. That. right. So those we wouldn't. Uh, right. Well, you've got 5,600 total, but 4,800 that are non exempt. 489. Right. Mm -hmm. That'd be 468,000, excuse me, 855, wouldn't it? That's. We, we're we're <coughs> tax, Robin, um, on the approved parcels. Right. Um, and then we were. The, actually, what Mount Shasta had proposed, and I think I have it in this handout. Is ninety six dollars on improved parcels and forty dollars on unimproved parcels. Okay. So there are going to be some parcels that don't have okay. houses, um, no, and okay. it'll be partially um, funded not only by that but by swim lessons because we will be able to charge for those for rental. And if if the, this is what LAFCO does for the property exchange, at least is what the consultant said, if the city does give the district ringy pool and park then a, a bit of the property tax that you have to go, that goes to maintain that park, then goes to the district. It's like 0.0001% or something, whatever okay. it is, we have to figure that out still, but uh, it's called a property tax exchange agreement. So when, when property goes to another district, part of the property tax goes with that. Mm -hmm. okay. And we talked a little bit about that in our meeting the other day. Uh, that's a, a common thing, LAFCO, determines it, but I'm thinking that we could give them ideas about what that might be. Yeah, I noticed that that wasn't in here, and we did talk about it at the last meeting yeah. that we right. had here. Yeah. It's included in, I think, the, the draft resolution that I sent to Steve. Mm -hmm. when, do, we have, do we have a copy of it? <coughs> I just sent it to but, Steve kind of for review to the lawyer and stuff, but I, I don't see it. You would, that That's not part of your uh, current packet? That was some information that... Uh, you may have gotten by email. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we'll need yeah. to know that and before that, that, the next meeting. That estimate is about 75 grand. 75. But as, yeah. as uh, Robin has pointed out, that is determined by LAFCO, and I have no idea what they use to look at that. So it's determined by LAFCO, and we just happen to have the chairman of the board of LAFCO <laughs> sitting right she's here. Like, no, I know. Me. So <laughs> Debbie, she, she, well, she's, she's trying to be um, yeah. very quiet because of that. Incognito. Exactly. Oh, yeah. but, <laughs> I love that. Mom's the word there. Uh, okay. okay. She can't say. And she can't, she can't right. vote on it. It's not with yeah. us. Madam. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't That's see okay. it. Go ahead. Um, for those improved lots, Robin, where, and it's not uncommon in Wairika to have a house on, on two lots or even three lots, mm -hmm. does that mean that that lot owner, if it's an improved lot, so there's a house on on two lots, does that mean they pay ninety six dollars times two? If it's two lots, the way we calculated this was a parcel has a site address assigned to it, and so if there's multiple addresses, the addresses span it. I don't believe so. It should be a one to one relationship. I believe we can look into that situation. I mean, again, we're just doing rough. Rough numbers. We can get more specific numbers by talking to the actual assess. I mean, the auditor, tax people. We're just being general. Yeah. So the question that you have hasn't got an, an exact answer yet, but we do need to have an exact mm -hmm. answer. I agree with you. Um, this is moving kind of quickly, so yeah. we're just putting this stuff together. Uh, I will talk to the county. Okay, because I'm wondering. Yeah, that, so if there are three addresses on there, they might pay 96 times three. No, there's usually it's only a one-to-one -one relationship. Like, 
for example, the uh, excuse me, could you please come down to the microphone? Yeah. As, uh, we're, so, we're being recorded and they won't be able to hear so you. Thank um, you. So in the analysis of improved parcels, we used um, parcels that have a site address assigned to them, and that's done through the planning department. Mm -hmm. And so um, the example of there's multiple addresses on a, an apartment complex, but there's one address. I mean, there's multiple residents on that, but it's still one property that's mm -hmm. assessed, parcel, improved parcel. So it's improved parcel values, not necessarily an address one-to-one -one relationship. So. But it's a different formula for an apartment building, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just a the tack that's an improved parcel. So is there a structure on it? Is there not a structure? So that determination of is it a parcel that's over 5,000? So, so let's let's just take, uh, I think it used to be called Pine Gardens. What's it called now? <laughs> uh, Shasta View. Shasta, Shasta View. View. They have uh, multiple addresses. I think they have three or four. Would that be, cons and it's probably, how many units is it, 70, 80? Something like that. Would, the, would they? Would that? Would, do we know? You may not. You, I right, think that's, that's what you're telling me. You're not mm -hmm. sure. What I'm, I'm curious about to yeah. find out is: is that going to be four? They have four addresses. Is that going to be four parcel taxes? Mm -hmm. um, so the if the property owner, each parcel has a property owner. And again, I'm going to embarrass myself here probably, but um, so the parcel that that owner might have, each parcel has a value on it, and I pay tax on each parcel. So there, the, there's improved parcels that doesn't relate to the address necessarily. Usually there's an address assigned to it. So we kind of had both numbers here as an estimate. Again, this is just pr proposals. But the actual analysis would be done by the experts. But essentially, if the parcel is improved by the assessor, the tax assessor determines this is an improved parcel with over 5,000, whatever value is determined as improved or not improved, then it doesn't matter if they own four parcels or however many pieces of property. Like I have, my property has a tiny little parcel and a really thick, really big parcel. I pay taxes on both, but the big one's improved, so I pay more on the improved parcel. I don't know, uh, that kind of example. Okay. You know? and, okay. And, and those are good that questions that, uh, that's my next thing to do. Okay. To go and talk to the county. And what we have to do Thank for you. the board resolution is actually clearly define all that. You can't just right. randomly say this. We have to say, this, these are the rules that we're going to use because the assessor can't do it unless we set the rules. So, so thank you. I, will get that. I just I just wanted to clarify because there was a question that that uh, that the apartment complex might pay more. Mm -hmm. It would be if there's a, an apartment complex on one parcel. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the proposal is that they would pay ninety six dollars. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Our uh, our measure H the fire tax was handled a different way where. As you increase the number of units on a parcel, then there's an increased fee. It's not one-to-one -one ratio, but it, 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 there well, is. Well, and, and, and so we're not there. We might we might make that change. I still have to yeah. talk to the assessor. We're sort of in a general state right now, but I'm seeing that we need to be very specific, and so yeah. we'll get that probably early next. Well, week. I like that idea yeah. where it's you know. Pays a little bit more and, on and something do it kind of multi. based on, yeah. Yeah. on what other people are doing. That's well, and that, that uh -huh. measure H is based on a presumptive oh, yeah. uh, that that you're going to that you have if you have 30 units, you're going to have 30 at least 30 people that you're right. going to respond to. And the same thing with what Robin's talking about. If you have 30 units, you're going to have some kit more than just two or three kids. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I see what impact. you're saying. The mm -hmm. impact yeah. would be greater if you have, you know, 80 yeah. apartments yeah. and you have 40 kids. Sure. And that's what she's acknowledging. Right. And yeah. so that's the part I haven't worked on yet. Yeah. And so I will. Yeah. You acknowledge that. There's a question that. in the back and I she's had it come down. <laughs> come on down. You've got to wait for me to walk down. There. Okay. okay. Yeah. You can. Come on down, Ann. <laughs> Ann's got now a, I'm officially old. I'm going to speak for old people. Ann's, <laughs> Ann's got a new hip. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, my concern is with people that are on fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to my friend who's on that park and rec district in Mount Shasta. And she said they did come up with a solution, which was if you applied in person, you could get your rate reduced to the non-residential rate or whatever that's called. So it would go from 96 to 40 or whatever oh. the other rate was. You mm -hmm. have to show up and you have to ask for it in person. But you could use that. I think that's a good selling yeah. point for somebody that's yeah. on a fixed income that they actually sure. could get a reduced rate. So <coughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good okay. job. <laughs> She's doing good with her new hips. <laughs> <laughs> 
Two okay. weeks, two weeks. So, so there's just that one hanging thing out there that's hanging and I will make sure it's yeah. not, uh, yeah, it's not hanging. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get it clarified. Because actually the board resolution, I've looked at some <coughs> from other places, is pretty darn detailed. I mean, it's pages long of what they sent to the county clerk for, uh, for the ballot measure. So it has to, we have to clearly define all that stuff. But I'll take into account multiple units, um, seniors, yes. and, um, and then the different Multiple things. properties Multiple with properties. one address. Right. Right. And I measure H, the, uh, although Parks District's really a residential, is the, the, where the demand's driven. Oh, okay. Not really from, so it's, it would be hard to argue that, say, McDonald's. Right, right. Or Burger King or Taco Bell oh, yeah, yeah. causes park usage, gotcha. although they, so. Sure, they do. They cycle kids through. Well, before the kids, before <laughs> the kids come to the park, hungry kids. Burger, yeah. yeah. You could argue that they they eat in the park. That's true. <laughs> Literally, I don't. You know, looking at, at this um, uh, at this schedule, I would say it's a very aggressive schedule. I'm impressed, and I've got my fingers crossed that mm -hmm. it'll work because I know I I don't know about others, but I know sometimes in the LAFCO process it takes. Yeah. considerably longer to get through the process. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, I, did call, I did call to say, um, it, to get it on the April 14th meeting, I talked to Rachel, yeah. she said March 12th, okay. so. Good. Um, but for the March 5th resolution, we need to have pretty clear understanding right. of absolutely everything. That, and there's said loose ends on the, mm -hmm. the how we're gonna we, charge that parcel uh, tax thing. I wasn't um, talking about our part. Right. Well, I know, but but you need we need to have it clear before Absolutely. you do the resolution. So it should be. Absolutely. Uh, I'll I'll probably try to do it tomorrow or the first thing next week. At the staff level, we are concerned about meeting that March fifth date. Mm -hmm. I think that that will be challenging. No. But well, it will be challenging if you don't have the information. Correct. That we have a draft yeah. resolution now, and we'll mm -hmm. have the final. When do we have to have that, Liz? Monday. Monday. <laughs> Today's Thursday. Oh, for the meeting. So, yeah. on the oh, geez. Oh, boy. So you can see that there's, you know, uh, anyway, a little delay will cut, cascade. Yeah, it, and that's what my point was, right. is that if there's a delay in any one of these, it could cause right. a much longer mm -hmm. um, cycle that we'd have to go through, it looks like, in order to get it on. I mean, I see that you did uh, you did put a little bit of cushion in here between June and July, right? The May uh, Board of Supervisors, hopefully, and then nothing in June, and then July 13th. Yeah. So you might need that cushion. Yeah, the only problem with, with the left is, is if LAFCO requires something and you don't do it in the right. first meeting and you have to come back to a second meeting, that was my only, that was kind of why the, it's in there, so. Right. Okay, any other questions? Well, good job. Yes, thank good you. job thank to you. all thank of you. you. Good thank job. you, Robin. I hard on you. I said, I, yes. Robin, I'm so sorry I missed the last meeting. We were having a meeting here oh, yeah. that didn't mm -hmm. get out till late. So. Okay, well, that's fine. All right. All righty. Well, this looks great. Yes. So forth and conquer. That's great. So, okay, that's uh, our presentation. <laughs> Discussion, possible action, consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion or a member of the audience wishes to comment on an item. The city manager recommends approval of the following consent calendar items. A, approval ratification of payments issued from February 7th through February 20, 2020. And B, approval of minutes of the meeting held February 6, 2020. What are, the, what are the wishes of the council? I'll, I'll, make, the, I'll make a motion to approve, ratif approve ratification of payments issued from February 7th through February 20th, 2020. And I will make a motion. Can I make it on the same motion? Yeah. Yes. You can actually just a make a motion to approve the uh, consent, consent calendar. calendar. Consent uh, calendar. I make a motion to approve the consent calendar as printed. <laughs> okay, do I have a second? I second. We have a Thank motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, city manager staff reports. Uh, I've actually, no, no, uh, no. item two. number two. We got you mean I'm two. dreaming? I have another <laughs> yeah. item. Okay, item number two. Discussion <laughs> possible action. Approve the transportation claim for FY 2019-2020. Oh, this is income. We have to approve this. Yes, yes local transportation fund and authorize the mayor to sign the claim on behalf of the city. City. Hello. Hi. Madam Mayor, members of council, we have before you our yearly LTF distribution. That's local transportation funds. Mm -hmm. Most of it goes to 
roads. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. well, most of it goes to the transportation system, the right. buses and the transportation center. Oh, yeah, right. However, the remainder goes to the city for mm -hmm. roads. And if you have questions, I'm here, but this is a fairly routine matter. We should probably mention that the amount is uh, just a little bit over $73,000. Right. right. I, uh, I was interested to see that the formula is the county receives 25%, excuse me, 25 cents for every $7.25 uh -huh. of state sales tax. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Yeah. If only 25 cents come back to the county That's and sad. then that is parcel, parcel between all of the cities, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. So this is money that comes through. I sit on the uh, the local transportation commission. I'm the chair this year, and I was pleased uh, as chair that we've got two hundred sixty six thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars coming back to the city. Cities. Cities. Yeah. No, that's us. Right. I, I, I thought you said city, and I was going to. I didn't say city. City of Wairika is two hundred sixty six thousand three seventy two in the nineteen twenty fiscal year. The county does use the majority of that allocation. Oh, I see what you mean. Right. They will use 192, 825, right. and we'll get, oh, we'll only get 73,547. <laughs> that won't build much road. <laughs> we'll take How it. do these numbers compare with this Passages. fiscal year? There's no comparison. Yes. Is it up or down? It's, it's down a tiny bit, I believe. I believe the prior year was something like 284. Thousand off the top of my head. And now it's 266. Sorry, I don't have right in front of me, but this is a yearly thing. We get the letter every year. Mm -hmm. So it, the sales tax for the county is down from year to year, then. Perhaps I, I, I didn't do an in-depth analysis. We, we could we could send that information out afterwards. It it varies, right. uh, some by the uh, revenues that are coming in, and then also by how much the transit uh, costs are. You know, some years they're a little bit higher than others because they try out um, different routes and so on. And we look at the net, which is the 73,000. And I, I apologize, I don't know whether it's a little bit higher or a little bit lower than last year, but it's, it's, it's comparable. It's comparable. And it's so. more than budgeted. It's more oh, than okay. budgeted. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Okay, the magic words from Reno. <laughs> those, those are the words we like to hear. Yeah. We have more money in the general fund, yes. right? A little bit more. A little, a little bit, bit more. more. A little right. bit counts. That's great. Okay. That's for sure. Okay. Is this uh, is this an item that needs approval? Yes. yes. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the transportation claim for fiscal year 2019-2020 local transportation fund and authorize the mayor to sign the claim on behalf of the city. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> I have a motion and a second <laughs> to approve the transportation claim. Fiscal year 2019-2020 from the LTC. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Go forth and More deposit money in yeah. the general fund. That's great. Now we're down to city <laughs> manager and staff reports. I just got ahead of myself. City manager, Steve. Yes, Mayor, members of council, I wanted to mention really two things. One is that we've been providing um, information to what's called the 211 system. And this is designed to if you need social services of some kind or have questions about social services and a lot of other related services, you can call 211. They'll have an operator there that will say, this is where you can find it. So they've been uh, getting information from us. They've been getting information from a lot of uh, nonprofits and other agencies as well. Um, so we're, we're getting that information to them. One of the other things that they have said is that the United Way is, is spearheading this. Uh, they're the people that have done it evidently done in uh, Shasta County, which is what we're modeling it after up here. And they, um, it, the 211, because it's a phone thing, is regulated by the Public Utilities Commission. Uh -huh. So uh, the uh, United Way has asked for our support. Actually, the, the term that they use is endorsement. Uh, but it's a pretty easy thing to, to do because um, they're the only ones doing it. So it's, it's not like there's competitors to do it right now. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I will be sending in something that supports that, Good. endorses that. Good. That's one um, of the things that we we're pushing for through the Homelessness Coalition, too, to correct. see that. Because that's a valuable asset for the homeless. Yeah. It, it, it helps make, get people headed direction. in the right direction instead of sometimes they'll come to City Hall and ask us questions because they don't know where else to go. And City Hall seems like it's as good a place as any. That's great. So anyway, that's happening. Also, I went to the uh, city managers conference, 
Uh, there's always lots of good news at city managers conferences. Uh, we talked about things like uh, housing and homeless and uh, CalPERS and how much the unfunded liabilities are. Um, programs for trying to not have liability coming from sidewalks and a, a number of other things that have to do with uh, cities. Uh, I always find out some good tidbits that I can bring home and then I also uh, find out that things could be much, much worse than where we are. So. Oh, yeah. As you go to conferences, you mean like worse. We live in a lovely city. No, no, no. What, what, what I mean is that there, uh, this there's is always still, more problems fiscal, elsewhere. We're, we're doing yes. good. We're yeah. doing good here yes, compared to are. some other yes, places. And, and the the war stories that uh, mm. other people tell are mm, sure. a lot better than mine. Yeah. So, so no way. Anyway, that's all I have today. A lot better or a lot worse. Mm. Okay. Well, a lot worse would be actually yeah. the right yeah. thing to say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They're more entertaining. Yeah, entertaining. Okay, Paul, do you have a report? I'll keep it quick. Enjoyed okay. the fireman's dinner. I was Did not win the chainsaw or the guns. <laughs> Didn't yeah. even come close. Yeah. And so it's nice to see everybody there. And Dwayne will probably second this, or maybe Joan will. But on, on your quick fix, um, they've taken the city has taken <laughs> care of the issue that I quick fixed. Um, yeah, right. yeah. Online, yeah. we have yeah. a program called Quick Fix. No, it's called Click. C, C, C Click Fix. C, C Click, click Fix. What's C, okay? Click Twitter. Click. Yeah. I was. I, I'm amazed. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's great. Should tell but them. I got a notice you should back tell them that how it works. I just put in. Uh, I you know what I what do you call it? Email transmitted uh, an issue to the city on something, and it was done. Week. When did we do it? A week ago? Yeah. And it was fixed like within yeah. two days. days. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. And it's it, they keep track of it. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's pretty cool. Well, and I, any of us will talk to you about it if you want to hear about it. Yeah, or right. any city employee will talk to you about it because it's a good way to find things, photograph them, send them to the city and go, and then the city knows where they are. They, Anyone that wants, we will send you an email with a link to the app. Yes. Exactly. It'll be fun. And, and it's on we our like it. Website homepage. Oh, that too. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yes. Right. One oh, click. yes. That's right. Yeah. Very cool new website. Thank you. Sure, Norm. Just enjoyed the fireman's dinner. Yeah. Nice. Did you win anything? No, I didn't win anything. Yeah. I didn't even you have to report it if you did. <laughs> <laughs> you got that nice card from Patty Grantham too. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got that. That's a nice card from Patty. A card from the Forest Service supervisor thanking us for. Uh, passing a resolution in support of the polyethylene burning so they can burn the slash piles. Yeah, so that's awesome. hopefully nice. that will help protect our city a little better. Yeah, that's awesome. And thank you for your service on the uh, the Fire Safe Council. Yes. Have you guys had a meeting? Uh, we have another one on Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, good. Great. Debbie. Okay, real Excuse quick. Me. I went to the fireman's dinner as well. I don't see a couple, any of the faces here that should have been there on Saturday night. It was a good dinner. And it was nice about? to be we were all here except no. for no no out in the audience. There's one here. Oh, there's Nancy. one yes. here. Yes. Oh, there's several Catherine. people here that were <laughs> two? there. Two? Chief wasn't there. Two. No, no, no. Nancy was there and Catherine was there and anybody else at the fireman's dinner? It was an awesome See, dinner. Mm -hmm. Good steak. It was excellent. Very well attended. Um, okay, Tuesday is the call your board meeting, and this time it's in Marika. Strings, if anybody cares to join my <laughs> alternate, please. Um, and keep in mind that the call your rest stop sees 1.9 million people a year, and those are Caltrans numbers. So if you need to advertise anything there, that's the place to go. Um, let's see, inside, people that walk inside, we have about 24. 100 a month in the winter time and more in the summertime that actually walk into the facility so it's the best front door to the county that you can find please use it more um let's see and citizen of the years this weekend friends of the fair bartending service i have tickets yes yes yes, yes. right here uh, <laughs> all it we'll, takes is money <laughs> yes we'll be there hosting the bar and remember that's always a good cause to support yes. uh, the fairgrounds, all the money, 100%. Even the tips go to the fairgrounds. <coughs> That's it. For the bar. Awesome. For the bar. Right. From the bar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, I did not attend the, the fireman's you dinner. I have, no, I, I got not. tickets. Um, I do have an excuse. Yeah. My aunt got stuck up in the mountains and 
I uh, one thirty in the afternoon. I was up on top of Ball Mountain trying to dig my aunt out, and I ended up getting stuck three times trying to get her out. I didn't get home till after seven, oh so I did have a legitimate excuse because I <laughs> we were planning on going to dinner. We were looking forward to the dinner because yeah. we went to it last year. You bought your tickets? Oh, we bought dinner. my tickets. Yeah, we had the tickets and everything, but unfortunately, I was. Uh, uh, we ended up eating um, Rayleigh's chicken oh, that night. <laughs> I thought you were going to say pork and beans. No, it was just, just yeah, it wasn't as good as I anticipated. Oh. Um, other than that, um, we did get some numbers back on the PIT count, the point in time count. Um, I'm not going to give you exact numbers yet because we don't have exact numbers yet, but um, I can tell you right now, um, Siskiyou County, as a general, went up 20% in homelessness activity. Some areas went up even more. Ours, looks like ours has held up to about 20% more activity in Wairika area, just to kind of give you an idea, um, which is maintained fairly well because nationwide, especially down in other areas, LA and whatnot, the numbers have increased a lot more than that percentage-wise. So. It's it it's is. getting it's getting yeah, but those are not those are not accurate. Not it quite says accurate. we've gone up from 2018 181 so, to 2019 to 270 so, so. and 2020 to 325. Correct. So we went act, actually from 2018 yeah, that's to, yeah, from 2018 to 2020. Now we went up 40 percent in the mm -hmm. homelessness activity. Um, numbers, like I said, I can tell you, but I'm, I want to give you exact numbers, um, which I will be winter. able to this next week. We have a homelessness Very meeting mild. this next. Monday at 1 30. Different time. Right? Yeah, different time because of the availability of the, the building that's uh, behavioral health, um, the Red Oak room at 1 30 this Monday. So, um, we as possible supervisors here, so I'm looking at, um, you there. might want to start coming because Lisa Nixon does attend and she's very valuable in our mm -hmm. yeah. on the efforts to this on this point so um, I encourage you guys and to come. the chair. <laughs> <laughs> he counts noses. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, other than that you know we yeah we'd like to, to see as much um, help we can on the you know in the future so thank you. So and that's all I have. Good job. Good job. I'm glad you got your aunt dug out safe <laughs> and that you got back safely. Um, it's been a pretty busy time. I also went to the fireman's dinner and saw everybody else there, but I just want you to know, he sat on that side of the room, she sat on that <laughs> side of the room, he sat over here, and I sat in the back, right? Yeah, Next we were, to Nancy, down we were that spread way. out, so and you did, couldn't have a meeting. On the other side. Yeah. Anyway, we uh, it was fun, and it was it's nice to be able to help out the fire department. Those guys work so hard, guys and gals. Yes, it worked so hard up there. So anyway, that was fun. Um, also had our Sacramento Valley Division League of California Cities teleconference board meeting. I'm still in the past president of that now. I was the president last year. Also, I attended uh, Eric Harms did a talk at the museum last Friday, Valentine's oh, yeah. Day. He did such a good job and he had pictures of the old time mining equipment. It was all about mining in Siskiyou County and that was really, really fun. And it was standing room only. We were in the back, right Nancy? We were in the back watching and, and my husband had to go sit in the car because he couldn't stand up that long. But anyway, it was really, really, a, I thought it was a nice event. And I'm really pleased to see that the museum is doing that living history uh, story uh, talk thing that's during lunch, I think it's at noon, um, once a month, I think it is, anybody know? On Fridays. On Fridays. Every Friday? I think it's once a month, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that was that was really cool. Uh, I don't know how many of you went to the Caltrans meeting last night that was at the Miners Inn. That was really informative. That there were a lot of people there. I was surprised. Filled up that that room, and they uh, they had a lot of Caltrans people there to um, to explain exactly what the work is going to be done on Main Street. It's uh, they're doing the planning right now. The actual work is going to start in 2022, and it's going to go from two to three years. So Main Street's going to be torn up for a while. So they, uh, you know, they they wanted every, they came to Rotary yesterday too to talk about it. They want everybody to be patient because they say it's going to make our downtown area, our Main Street area, ever so much more beautiful. So I'll remind people of that when everybody's <laughs> screaming because they can't get in their driveway. Um, anyway, uh, also the planning commission. I went to the planning commission meeting last night uh, here. Kathleen was there on the planning commission. 
And um, Amon Dillon and her husband were here and they talked about the new truck stop, which uh, is, I am so pleased to see how fast it's going up. Mm -hmm. And she said that it should be up and operable by the end of June. That's you know, her target she said, date. Yeah, that's, that's her target, target date, right. Yeah. So it's it's progressing very quickly. We'll, we'll see how we that would, We would refer to that as early summer. Early <laughs> summer, there you go, yeah. early summer. So I was really planning, please see here. Oh, and also those of you that know Barry Olin, be sure and wish him a happy birthday. He's the chair of the Planning Commission and we all sang happy birthday to him. He was sitting right here last night. Um, also, so I went out to the truck stop today and I met with a mom up there. They also own the Holiday Inn Express and she's got some other plans, which will be a surprise for the future that I think are going to be very nice and add a lot to our town uh, in the form of uh, history and uh, native and uh, some other things. There's gonna be two new restaurants up there, uh, an Eastern Indian restaurant and a, nice. uh, like uh, Panda Express, but not Panda Express anyway. So that'll be interesting up there as well. Um, also had a meeting uh, over at the Economic Development Council. I had a local transportation commission meeting as well. And I wanted to let everybody know, you guys know because you were at the meeting, but the next Lola, and Lola is, Lola, Lola <laughs> is the League of Local Agencies. And it's all the important cities as well as the, uh, the uh, community services districts are part of this group. They're going to be in Wairika. We move it around. We have quarterly meetings. It will be in April in Wairika at the wine bar. So uh, I'm planning, Liz is helping me with that. Thank you, Liz. I'll, I promise you I'll get all the information for you so we can do the, so we can do the, the she can do the flyer. She does a good job with that. She does. And that's all I can think of right now. So I think that we're going into closed Actually, session. What? I'd like to, uh, recognize Dave Simmons' mother that passed away. We actually mm. did a uh, presentation for her on her 100th birthday. Oh, that's Remember? right, we did, right here, mm -hmm. yes. That's yeah. true, and and then another sad note, I don't know how many, I'm sure everybody uh, knows Gary Allen. Gary Allen passed away on Monday, so so very sorry to hear that, and our condolences go out to his family. Um, yeah, it's been a, kind of a rough day. Yeah. Does Chief have anything you'd like to report? Chief? Do you have a report, a staff report? One short thing. Okay. Um, today I was informed by uh, Senator Dolly's office that our efforts to uh, reintroduce legislation for uh, a law that, that deals with school safety and instructions on school grounds that is a giant void uh, right now has actually made it uh, and has been assigned to Senate Bill, uh, Senate Bill number 1169. 1169, good. It's not trackable yet, but probably by the end of next week it'll be trackable. And at some point in the future, I'll make a presentation to council as far as what it exactly it entails. And I'll be asking for support from California Teachers, um, the Deputy Sheriff's Association, California Chiefs Association, et cetera, to make sure that it makes it through. Uh, we, would, we would like to write a letter of support too, yes. so if you can get us that information. I will. <coughs> Thank That's you. awesome. But we're well on the way. It's back on for at least it's been assigned to Senate Bill. And it passed last, uh, last time. It was introduced um, with bipartisan support throughout the state. And it made it to Good. the governor's desk. It was vetoed by uh, Governor Brown, but pretty confident that, um, that it will pass this time. Good. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Okay, great. Liz, our city clerk. One pesky reminder. Yes. Form 700s. Uh oh. I haven't received from anybody from the table except for Retta. Uh -oh, mine, got, mine, mine got sent off. Good job, Retta. Mine got sent off. I know. I seen it. I seen mine got sent off from my office manager. Paper, paper, paper sent first is the deadline. She gets a copy of it. Uh, I was thinking the deadline is April, but your city mm -hmm. clerk's thinking, oh my God, we're two months in and they haven't submitted anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Well, she does all mine online, so. Yeah. Right up. All good? You're good? Okay. Uh, Liz gets a copy.